Let's get you ready for the Kentucky Derby this weekend. Armin in the back, 104.5, the team. Joining us now from predictaform.com, Dan Zucker. Dan, thanks for your time, man. I know it's a busy weekend ahead of us. And tell me, first of all, about Predictaform. What can your site offer to horse racing fans looking for that extra edge in this weekend's big race? So here's the deal with our site. We produce our own pace figures and, and uh, play value, but it's all about the odds and it's all about value. So we look at who's going to win the race, but then we look against their odds and we try to help players find out where the value is. You don't need somebody to tell you that a favorite's going to win all the time. Yes, that's logical. We look for horses that have value and are essentially overlays or underlays rather on the betting board. So that really is the main difference between what Predictive Form does and what anybody else does. And right now we have the Derby analysis picks and predictions all on the site for free. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Predictiveform.com. All right, Dan. So what horses right now are regressing and should we be avoiding in plays this weekend at the Derby? You get right into it. Well, I'm going to tell you the race starts and stops with American Pharaoh. You don't need me to tell you that every pundit's probably come on and picked American Pharaoh. Our our analysis of American Pharaoh and my personally is he's set up for regression. He's a five to two favorite. I felt like his last race at the Arkansas Derby was a lifetime top. It was without a doubt his fastest race from a figure perspective. And you guys know, as an as an athlete or even as an equine athlete, putting back to back top performances together is really difficult to do. You see it all the time in March Madness, like Kentucky just couldn't repeat, couldn't put their best performance on the floor night after night. I think that's the case with American Pharaoh. And as a 5-2 to two favorite plus a situation where he looks like he could be regressing, he's not our top pick. As a matter of fact, he's not in our top three. Wow. Wow. Dan Zucker, PredictiveForum.com with Armin and Levac on 104.5. The team, Levac out today, uh, choosing to take vacation on the biggest sports weekend of the year. What a freaking genius he is. All right, Dan. So, as, as, as you said, getting right into it. So, if American Pharaoh is regressing, who do you like? Who's progressing? Who's in the right spot heading into the Derby? We think Carpe Diem's in the, in the right spot. Okay. With, with the exception of the post position. The unique thing about Carpe Diem for me is he's got this running style where he's able to, he's won races on the front end, in the middle of the pack, which is called stalking, and from the way back, which is called closing. It's very difficult, actually very difficult, it's impossible to train a horse to do that. You can train a horse to do one of those three, but a horse that can do all three has natural ability. And what's unique about that is he allows himself the flexibility to go to the lead or he can sit in the middle of the pack or he can come from behind. I really like that. From a figure perspective, he looks to be one of the fastest in the field. His father, his sire, Giants Causeway, uh, has the most graded stakes winners in 2014, so we know he's bred well. I just like everything about Carpe Diem, with the exception of the two-hole. You know, I, I took a big sigh when I saw that he drew out the two, because really it's, it's a very rough spot to come out of in that he only can see one horse inside and one horse outside versus somebody in the 10 or 12 that can see all the horses inside him. Is there another horse besides Carpe Diem that's in a bad post spot this weekend? Well, the one is in a horrible post spot. You know, uh, Ocho, 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 that's the worst place to be because the starting gate is, is not necessarily at a 90-degree angle to the rail. You know, so there's an advantage coming from the middle or the outside. He's on the one. He's going to be forced to go to the lead, and the only horse he can see is the two and the rail. Typically, they get smashed into the rail, and he was a complete toss. I mean, he was a pretty much a toss before he drew the rail. So... He's my best bet to finish last. Dan Zucker of PredictiveForum.com. Dan, when we hear all these numbers being crushed, I feel like sometimes the, the weather is very seldom a variable. Now, it's a very slight, very slight chance of rain in Louisville on Saturday. But if it does rain, are all the numbers just screwed at that point? At this level, you know, with these kinds of competitors, a, a slight rain is not, is not going to do anything at all. I mean, there's been some downpours over the history of the race that's changed the configuration. But here, no, this is... This is a race where there are five favorites that have not lost a race this year. It's it's one of the most competitive derbies we've seen in 25 or 30 years, and we meaning everybody that's watched the races. You know, last year, California Chrome was a standout horse. This year, while American Pharaoh looks to be that way, he drew the outside. There's some question as to whether he can get the, this distance. He hasn't raced against more than nine horses. He hasn't been banged around. So th- this is going to be a great race, as competitive as I've seen in a long time. Dan Zucker, PredictTheForm.com. Is it possible that this weekend could be leading up to some juicy long shot plays? And if so, uh, any long shot that jumps out to you right now? Yeah, I mean, let's not even talk about the long shots. Let's just talk about the financial pressure and the way the board's going to spread. What I mean by that is 
There are three favorites, really two clear favorites in here, American Pharaoh and Dortmund, 5-2 to two and 3-1 to one morning line. Both of those horses are going to get significant financial pressure. There'll be a lot of money on them. What that does is, is it artificially inflates everybody else in the race. Last year, the longest shot in the, in the Kentucky Derby was 49-1. to one. This year, you're going to see horses at 60 and 80 to 1. There is going to be underlays. There is value, without a doubt, that's going to be spread on the board because of the financial pressure coming down on the favorites. Good stuff, man. Dan Zucker, PredictiveForum.com. And again, all this available for free, PredictiveForum.com. Dan, uh, if you're writing a headline for Saturday night or su- Sunday morning for how this uh, race turns out, uh, how does it turn out right now in your mind? Best question I've been asked you know, in the last three days of doing interviews I think the headline says Carpe Diem wins the Derby, moves forwards towards the Triple Crown, and takes on uh, you know takes on a field at the Preakness. That's wow. what I would say. Wow, great stuff, Dan. Really, what, what do you need me to say? American Pharaoh wins the Kentucky Derby, <laughs> like everybody else is going to say. No, I like it, man. I'm in. You're making me rethink every everything every play I was going to play for the weekend. Well, you guys are up at Saratoga. Saratoga is my f- most favorite place. To go in the whole wide world, man. I go there every year. Well, dude, when you're here this summer, let us know. We'd love to have you in studio and talk for a little bit. Yeah, let's do that for sure. Sounds good. Dan Zucker, PredictiveForm.com. Again, check out his fine work, PredictiveForm.com. And Dan, we'll definitely be in touch, man. All right, Armin. Thanks for having me on.